Tim Mahoney, the Global Director of Education and Coaching for True. And welcome to our Player Development Month, the month of May. All golfers are trying to get longer in their distance. I've been teaching for 40 years. I've not had one offer tell me, Mahoney, I want to hit shorter. So let's spend some time today talking about how to increase your distance. You look at what Rory McIlroy is doing, what uh, Bryson DeChambeau is doing, what all golfers are trying to do is to get longer with their golf swings. And probably the most important thing is, is your body moving freely on both sides of the swing. You know, if, you're, if your posture is rounded, you can't turn. If you're tight in the glutes, if you're tight in the thoracic spine, if you're tight in the shoulders, if you're tight anywhere, you can't, you can't move freely. So what you need to do is to come up with a program to help you increase the, the, the freedom of motion on both sides of your swing. And probably the most important aspect of this is as you make your swing, is a dissociation between the hips and the shoulders as I make my back swing. So again, as I swing back, you see how my upper body is turning, my upper body is initiating the swing. So again, I turn, then my hips follow. So there is a disassociation between my shoulders and my hips as I make my swing. And as we go with Catherine Roberts from Yoga for Golfers, Catherine's got some concepts that are going to help you with that, with that concept. Also, the glutes play an important part of the golf swing. Is that you got to turn freely on both sides of the swing. So as I swing back, I turn my right glute going back. As I initiate that downswing, I actually slide a little bit, but that slide is the effect of my left glute moving freely down the swing. So again, I got to have freedom of motion in my glutes. My glutes have to be activated on both sides of the swing. And something all golfers can do is use the ground. You think all golfers can use the ground during the swing. That's why golf's a game of a lifetime. You can use the ground. So again, as I swing back, as my upper body turning, again, initiating that swing, my midsection following, I got the disassociation coming down. I'm using my glutes, but then I can use the ground. If you look at the, uh, the top 20 LPJ players rated at impact, both their heels are off the ground. So what are they doing? They are actually using the ground. You look at the players on all aspects of games is that they actually lower going back, I slide and I jump. So that's using the ground. So as we as we, as we go back to Catherine, we're gonna talk about the, 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 the shoulders and the hips, we're gonna talk about the, the glutes, and most importantly, how we use the ground to help you with more distance. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna target here is getting efficient internal and external hip mobility. I like to use an exercise called window washers. So start on your back, okay? You're gonna take your feet wider than mat width apart. That's really important. Let's bring your arms into external rotation. From here, you inhale and bring the knees down to the left. Exhale, bring them back to center. Inhale over to the right, and exhale back to center. Now, the progression that I'm gonna take you through today could also be a really great progression just as a dynamic warm-up to get your body prepared for the explosive nature of the golf swing. Okay, so we just do a couple window washers, again, going through internal and external rotation. And then we're going to heel toe the feet back together. So now my feet are about hip width apart. Arms are down by my side, really, really strong arms here. From here, I'm going to arch my low back. So I'm going into an anterior tilt. And then I'm going to press my low back into the ground to fire up my glutes. Very important part of uh, the golf swing to generate power is those strong glutes. And then I'm going to inhale to curl my spine down one vertebrae at a time. Exhale, my bum will land, and I go back into an anterior tilt. So let's continue through a few of these. Now, why this is also important is because through impact, you need to be able to create a very strong posterior tilt because that's how your glutes will fire. It'll be very difficult for them to fire if you're in an anterior tilt. So let's go one more. Okay. Here we go. And curl your tail. Come all the way up. Very good. Now heel toe your feet together. So let's immediately get right into some glute activation. Extend your right leg straight up to the ceiling. Dorsiflex your ankle. Inhale to lower at ankle height. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Now what's key here is I am not letting my left hip drop. Okay? And I'm firing this left hip with strength and this one with action. Dynamic action, good. And then you're gonna put the foot down, we immediately switch sides, leg is up, flex down, point up, flex down, point up. Don't let your hips move at all, right? So take your mind and think about your glute. Good, here we go, two more, down, 
And one more, very good. Put the foot down, curl all the way down, one vertebrae at a time, excellent. Now let's go right into creating um, the shoulder and hip separation. So we're gonna do a yoga pose called a twisting table, okay? So start on your hands and knees like so. Spread your fingers wide. This is your only connection to the club, so make sure your fingers are spread wide. Now what I want you to do is push the tops of your feet into the ground, so you're in what's called plantar flexion. This is really good because if you think about the finished position, your right foot will be in plantar flexion, okay? Right hand comes behind the head. Take an inhale and twist towards me without swaying or sliding your hips. Exhale, bend your elbow and bring the back of your shoulder down. Okay, inhale up and exhale down. Again, so we're creating some separation between the shoulders and the hips. Let's go one more. Good. Okay, I'm gonna switch sides. I'm just gonna turn around so you have a better view of me. All right. Hand behind the head, press the calves through the shins and the shins into the ground. Inhale to turn left, think turning past the finish, turning past the target, and then exhale under. Inhale up, don't sway or slide your hips. Nice job, exhale under. And again, good. And let's go two more, turn, last one. Excellent. All right, let's come all the way down to your belly, okay? You're on your forearms. This is actually one of my favorite exercises to do for creating that shoulder to hip disassociation. So now, bring your left leg up like this, dorsiflex your ankle, slide and thread your right arm under. From here, take your hand to the base of your skull and inhale to open. Now, what I want you to do here is push this knee into the ground and stretch this hand away from you. And then exhale, come back, very good. So let's do a few more here. Something else I want you to think about when you're doing this is that you are not letting your rib cage pop open. So you're keeping a lot of strength in this canister. We call it intra-abdominal pressure. And what that does is, is that helps create more stability through your center, really nice. And one more. Good, awesome. Okay, let's switch sides. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to the other side so you can see me. All right, on your belly, legs come together, bring your right leg up, dorsiflex your ankle, slide your arm under. It's really important that this hand be on your neck. So I don't have my fingers at my ear. My hand is on my neck and it's really supporting my neck. As I inhale and stretch to the top of my back swing, and I exhale to come down. Good, inhale, and exhale. We'll do a few more. Good. Last one. Big breath into open, keep that rib cage down, and then exhale to come back. Very good. Okay, now for this next series, I want you to grab your club, and what I'll suggest is that if you have any issues with your knee, what you can do is you can just take the yoga mat and just kind of fold it over so you have a little extra padding, okay? So, the golf swing happens in all three planes of motion. So I like to train my athletes in the most authentic way I can. So I'm always training them in tri-plane motion, okay? So, this is called the sagittal plane. We're gonna start this way, and actually I think I'll show you from the side. All right, my left foot is gonna come forward. Now, before we even begin, a really important point here is that I am now pulling my heel and my knee towards each other. What that will do is turn on my hamstring and my glute on the left side. All right, your club will be here at shoulder height, okay? And now you're gonna to inhale to drive your knee over your toes, which will get this hip into extension and give you the dorsiflexion I want. And then you're gonna exhale and twist left. Inhale, come back to the center and exhale back. Good, so you inhale, you exhale, you inhale and you exhale. Keep going. And what I wanna point out is that if I took the club here, right, my posture will remain upright the entire time, right? So I'm not letting my posture come forward. All right, one more time. And turn, good, awesome. All right, switch legs. 
Okay, so this is called sagittal plane hip drives with rotation. But everything is very integrated all the time, which is why your heel is dragging towards your knee and your knee is dragging towards your heel. And if you're doing that with a lot of um, control, intensity, focus, you will feel this hamstring turn on and this glute turn on. Here we go. So inhale and exhale. Inhale back and exhale. Nice job. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Good. Again, make sure your posture remains upright. Good. Excellent. Okay, let's come out of that. So now we're going to go into a different plane of motion. I'm going to roll the yoga mat back. And on this one, we're going to go more of a 45 degree angle. Okay? So my right foot will come up like this. If I took my club, and I lay my club down 45 degree angle. Okay? That's how you kind of know that you're in the right line. Similar situation here is that I want your heel and your knee dragging towards each other. Again, turning on the glute and the hamstring. It's kind of interesting. A lot of people think that they have very tight hamstrings when a lot of people just have very weak hamstrings. And we need your hamstrings to be strong so that you can manage on either lots, okay? Because it helps with knee flexion. All right, so now, back of my hand is here. And I'm pushing my hand into my knee and my knee into my hand with about 25% intensity. All right, bring your left arm up. You're gonna inhale to take the knee over the toes. Exhale, you're going to bend away from this knee. So it's a lateral bend away from the knee. So I'm not dumping into the knee, I'm bending away. And then I exhale to come up. So let's go inhale, exhale, bend. Inhale, come out of the flexion. Exhale, out of the knee. Good, two more. Good. So again, if you think about the golf swing, it's moving you in three planes of motion. Essentially, all of your joints are moving in three planes of motion. Very good, that's good size. So we need to train that way, right? Okay. Here we've got this 45 degree angle. I'm squeezing my heel and my knee together really tightly. Back of my hand is here, right arm is up. Here we go, inhale, exhale, bend away from your leg. Good, and then come back, nice job. Nice, last one. And bend, very good. Okay, now grab your club again. We're gonna set up for the next plane of motion of these hip drives. So, again, if I take the shaft here, my heel and my knee, <clears throat> excuse me, my heel and my knee are in one straight line, okay? And I'm gonna bring my arms up to 90 degrees. If this bothers you, because if you've got maybe a rotator cuff problem or whatever, you can just take your hands onto your waist. Okay, so my arms are up, four parts. Inhale, drive, exhale, rotate. Inhale, come out of the rotation, and exhale, very good. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. So like I said in the beginning of this, you can take this short series and do it at your house before you go to the bridge, before you go to play, okay? But very important when you're preparing your body for the explosive nature of the golf swing, you need to be doing dynamic movements. So don't do any static stretching before you go out to play. Good, we'll switch sides. However, there is a time when static stretching would be okay, but it's mostly post round, not to get your body ready for golf. Okay, arms up, here we go. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Again, keep this rib cage down the whole time. I wouldn't even mind if you kept your hands around your rib cage so that you can really feel what's happening here. So for a lot of us, we have a tendency to pop our rib cage out and that is going to rob us of the power that we need to create more distance. Last one. Good. Okay, we're gonna do one more exercise, okay? And what I want you to do is take your glove, just move it away for a moment. I'm gonna be on my right knee. My left foot will come out like this. 
Let me just slide back for a moment. Okay, if I took the shaft, my arch, my knee, and now my hand will be in line with the shaft. Okay, now, I wanna take this bottom hip and I wanna take it into extension, but I don't do that by letting this leg fall in, right? So there's, there's a whole link system that's happening here. Inhale to bring your arm up. <coughs> Excuse me. Inhale to bring your arm up. Exhale to sit back into your hip and rotate from your center and tap the ground. Inhale, push the legs and the feet into the ground. The hips come forward. The torso opens. There you go. And why this is important, why I'm cueing that, is because this is modeled around an efficient kinematic sequence. Okay, one more. And hips, there you go, torso, good. If there's more for you, you can stretch your arm over your head, push on the outside edge of this left foot, pull the rib cage down, stretch a little bit longer, but from your center, not your traps, okay? There you go, gorgeous. All right, come up with control. Okay, we'll switch sides. Here we go, make sure everything's in alignment. I'm kind of a stickler about that, right? So if you think about it, you know, you, you know, if you like, you start to play around with your grip, right? And it seems to be a very subtle change that makes a really big difference. This is how I like to teach, right? It's all about the subtleties to make the big change. So that's why I pay a lot of attention to these subtle cues, okay? Your left hand will come down, everything is in alignment. Inhale the arm up. Exhale, bring the left hip into flexion and rotate from your center and tap. Inhale, let's go feet, feet push down, hips go into extension, torso rotates open, and then the hand, the shoulder and the hand. But don't let this come behind you. Keep everything integrated. Inhale here, exhale. And inhale. Good, last one. Hold it open here. If there's more, you can take your arm over your head, push onto the outside edge of your right foot, split your body in the center. You should feel this all the way down your right side, okay? Because in golf, we need to have some good extension so that we can get more power and distance. But keeping everything centered, integrated, good, is really important. Okay, well, I would recommend that you do this whole series. Again, you can use it as a dynamic warm-up. You can use it as a Yoga for Golfers program that you can do really every day. And um, you should see some tremendous results. Uh, our goal for you is that you get more power and distance, you feel stronger, you play longer, and you play better. Thanks for joining me.